He is a native of Germany as well as a self-taught artist. His goal is always to create artwork that raises awareness for the environment as well as global warming. The reason behind Stefan Wagner using Mardi Gras beads is to showcase a medium between the beauty of the once used beads as well as his style of illuminating his pieces from within. Bead Town Northwest Indiana Community Project is sponsored by Methodist Hospital Foundation. This project also includes one of Wagner's most noted pieces of work, which is in the Guinness Book of World, World Records. Wagner currently holds the record for the largest mosaic artwork. To learn more about Stefan, ba Stefan Wagner and his complete body of work, visit his website at galleriaalegria.com. Mardi Gras, everybody. My name is Alex Montanez, and um, welcome. Thank you for joining us at WIUN Radio uh, speakers <laughs> today. Um, we, uh, today I'm here with Stefan Wagner, the mastermind behind the town, the visually stunning. Well, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Happy Mardi Gras, everyone. Um, how did Beat Town, what, what brought you to to help Mardi Gras. Well, um, it took a little while. You know, first I moved down to New Orleans in 2006, um, more to help after the destruction of um, Hurricane Katrina, which devastated the region. And um, my background was uh, business development, so financial software distribution and marketing. And it becomes a little bit uh, meaningful afterwards because. Um, I moved down to New Orleans because when, when you work in marketing or in sales, you always see spreadsheets and sales flows. You never see the results of your of your labor. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that helps rebuild New Orleans. As a German, you know, I felt I found that the United States and the Allies did the same thing with Germany after the Second World War. And so I wanted to give back to the United States a little bit and help. So I thought, okay, you know, there's a misconception about Mardi Gras in New Orleans and the rest of the world because everybody just thinks it's, uh, you know, beats for boobs and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, and Bourbon Street. And there's a whole lot more to it. And so just to give the, uh, the audience an, an idea is, you know, in Germany, they make political cartoons out of, you know, carnival um, and throw candy at these parades. In Rio de Janeiro, they, you know, we know all the costumes and the samba and the Mardi Gras and Carnival is celebrated in Mexico, Quebec City, you know, all over the world. And so, and I thought, okay, New Orleans, and knowing New Orleans, I think it deserves a whole lot more than just, you know, people talking about Bourbon Street. And so I wanted to showcase that misconception in images. And um, so I practiced with these Mardi Gras beats at the beginning, you know, and, uh, you know, so that's, that's the I thought, well, they all look always terracotta style. You know, why not? You know, 
find a way to make to make these mosaics, which they actually are, to make them a little bit more, you know, uh, professional. And so I realized that I have to cut every single bead, um, you know, off the strand in order to pack the mosaics a little tighter. And um, that was my first aha moment, you know. And so I started them up. I said, oh, these pieces look better. And then I realized that as a mosaic artist. I am limited by the size of the beads. And so for me to show detail, such as a star or a fleur de lis or a gas light, I have to make big images. And so, so that was not a problem for me, you know, to, to think of larger images. But with that, it took more time. You know, you need to cut a whole lot more time. A bead, you need to, uh, you need to spend so much more time on it. And so a four foot tall by six feet wide piece takes me about eight weeks to finish at that time. You know. So um, the tennis world record, according to the mosaic, 40 feet that mm -hmm. was shown in the gallery today. Um, how many people, you, you wanted to make it more than just one person, you being, you didn't want to be the center. What made you think that I need to meet everyone? How many people were there? And how did you bring everyone to the community of this place? Well, um, I believe in the aspect that art always has to uh, give back and entertain, and I think that's every artist's goal. What I didn't realize that I had developed a process to make art out of Mardi Gras beads, which was, uh, the way I did it was a little bit different because I glued the beads onto the surface and uh, grouted them like a, a mosaic would be, a tile mosaic would be made. But then other teachers in the community wanted to learn my process, and they asked me how to, if I would donate like a, a flower to the school, and I said, why would you want me to donate a piece to the school? Well, we want to train our students of how to make artworks out of Mardi Gras beads because we have so many of them. And I said, okay, why, if you want to make that commitment, why don't you let me teach your students and you work with me on an exhibit, a sub-exhibit, such as like maybe the food items of Louisiana, and then um, we can teach the children about Louisiana at the same time while we create art. And so that started the, the community outreach and the community process of creating uh, mosaics out of uh, Mardi Gras beads with the community. So that was in, in 2010. Now it's 2014 and we have nearly worked with 6,000 school children in schools to create mosaics out of Mardi Gras beads that are all part of the exhibit that we call B-Town. And B-Town has been traveling for a year and a half all, over, all across Louisiana and for the first time in December, we decided to bring it up to Northwest Indiana. And the Methodist Hospitals Foundation was trying to uh, uh, establish carnivals in this region, thought that this would be a good idea for Beatown to come up here and tell the story. And so, as Beatown has traveled, I reached out more and more to the community and to participate in schools. And uh, so far, over 10,000 people, old and young, have worked on creating these pieces together, including the, the artwork that we're referring to, the Guinness Book World Record that we established on December 4th in Natchitoches, Louisiana, which is in central Louisiana, that is the oldest city uh, in, in the Louisiana Purchase, and it's a 48 um, uh, you know, feet wide uh, artwork that is uh, a new Guinness Book of World Record. So it's not only just about art, creating art, it's about bringing everyone in and, and, and making a unified like thing of learning and then uh, progressing. What has been a humbling experience is when you start off something and it's being well received and all of a sudden when it goes viral and people are loving it and, and, and they want to you know be part of it. So this is what what is an extremely humbling experience that all of a sudden now all the schools uh, you know most of the schools in India want to want to do this part. And that is so well received that even in Northwest Indiana, when we did some pieces together, that we started with the um, Colonel Wheeler uh, uh, School in, in Crown Point, or the um, uh, the Emerson School in, uh, in in Miller, that all of a sudden, you know, kids learn that it doesn't have to be just Mardi Gras beads. The same process can be used to you know for fossils that we in implemented mm -hmm. in the Guinness World Record or nails, screws, or bottle caps. It's just the process of taking the time of trying to make a good image out of something, you know, mm -hmm. out, of, uh, 
out of recycled materials. So, so yeah, a lot of stuff gets thrown away, and I did not want to become like a like a tree hugger or a greenie, <laughs> because I do believe because sometimes they are like too much in your face, mm -hmm. and I still respect carnival and what 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 it represents, the family traditions. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, the community has created carnival and made it so popular that we generate so much trash. So I thought, okay, the community also has to be responsible for the excess of it. And I said, you know, in, in a way, let's make something beautiful out of it without, you know, without judging, yeah, you know, without, changing, without changing. It's just, it's just another part, another life form for these Mardi Gras beads that are being thrown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is, there, is there like anything you're gonna be doing here? I mean, if you are, you're down in these here. Are you planning on doing any, you said that you've got contacts and contacted some schools uh -huh. in Indiana. Is there anything else you might be wanting to do? Well, right now we have over 70 artworks here. Um, today was the last day at Mardi Gras for the exhibits in Crown Point and, and in Miller. And then we had eight satellite uh, locations where uh, we had pieces that promoted the exhibit, B-Town, Northwest Indiana. Mm -hmm. So we're grateful that the Methodist Hospital Foundation brought it here, and they're considering it maybe bringing it back. But because of the outreach and because of what it does for schools, you have to understand, when, when, when tough are times, uh, when, when the times are tough, every school is, 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 is cutting budgets, right? And the mm -hmm. first thing that always goes is art, art. you know? Art, music and art. And, and ironically, that is a f that's why all the schools want B-Town in the process and, and, and into the schools is because it teaches, while I work with, uh, with students on this piece, excuse me, it, it teaches about history, what is the artwork what we are working on. Then we have, it teaches math, how many beats do we need, do we have to estimate it. For the frame, how much linear footage So because of that, I was um, introduced to uh, Mayor Karen Freeman Wilson and the school board of Indiana, uh, Gary, Indiana, and uh, I met uh, the superintendent, Dr. Cheryl Pruitt, and um, we talked about this a little bit, and she says, well, what would you would like to do? And I said, well, I really would like to tackle an entire school district and see if we can do something for Gary, where children learn the greatness about Gary, you know, um, the music, the music man, um, the architecture, uh, the Jacksons, Miller Beach, the, the heritage area, the parks there. And it's a beautiful area. And I think if children know about something like this and help work on a Gary project with me, then um, they, that installs a little bit of pride in them that 
you know, that they don't get so uh, frustrated when they have to pass, you know, abandoned or build, burned out buildings on the way to school, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, you've got you to gotta muster up a lot of self-motivation mm -hmm. when you have three, walk, three blocks to walk to school and you're not really inspired and then by the time you're at school and you have seen so much. You want to give up. Exactly. And I think an exhibit like this that is going to be paid attention to wherever it travels to, such as in um, you know, Louisiana, they will be interested about Gary just by the nature of what I'm going to do next with the beats, right? Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I think regions like Chicago, Detroit, or other ones, they'll see you know, what art can truly do. And this has become art with the mission. With a mission. <laughs> you understand? I, I, you, I, you've been, you've lived in a hard life. You, you haven't had the, the, the privileges of. You understand Gary and, and the hardships of it. Well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I grew up in a town in northern Germany. It's called Wilhelmshaven, and Wilhelmshaven was very huge during the Second World War. It's because it was a seaport where all the submarines launched during the Second World War. So after the war was lost, Wilhelmshaven, uh, Germany was not allowed to build naval ships on in the military anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, no employment. So Wilhelmshaven is now all the way down to like 86,000 people yeah. population, just like Gary. And um, because of the, the low income in that area, the city was, you know, coined, you know, nicknamed as Mud Town because it's on the coast. And every every six hours the tide comes and then you know the water goes away and then you see a lot of mud that you can walk on, mm -hmm. and um, so so I learned from it. My my you know my mother got me when I was very young. Uh, when she was very young, she got me, and uh, and so she was also a, a Section H you know recipient, mm -hmm. and uh, and so I know the tough times of what some kids might face. And so for me, when I was in Chicago for. Um, 16 years, and it educated me. I felt like I could give back at the same time, and I remember Gary, Indiana, being always talked negatively about, and I want to change that. Mm -hmm. it, this is an amazing, an amazing concept, and a beautiful project that I can see, you know, I, I, I want to represent it. It sounds not only fun, but it sounds like it's going to serve so many natural things and change the life, change the life, bring it into Yeah, we definitely um, reaching out a whole lot more. We are starting draft the plans right now. Um, we have a, 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 some, a semi press conference in, in May when the A double CP uh, conference, I think it's you know nearby, and then in September we make a full press conference. And What is really amazing about this, so the Gary School Project, the, 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 the school board with it, and uh, 16 schools in it, right? But we have secured 25 schools already. In, mm -hmm. in Lundstrom, Hammond, East Chicago, Chesterton, um, Crown Point, Valparaiso, and uh, Michigan City. And so schools from that area will also participate, just one in each city. To, to lend their support for the Gary project. It's because at one point, you know, this was all just one huge steel town community. So if somebody wants to um, get involved, they can shoot an email and send an email to 1914magazine at gmail.com and then I will file their names um, in order to, before we get really, you know, going on it. But definitely, if you are in the region, look out for it. Great, well thank you so much, Stephanie Wagner, for um coming here at IUN and the WIUN radio speaker series. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so Happy much. You have a great evening. Happy Mardi Gras to you, too. Thank you. Mr. Wagner. We, we have a young man out here, and I believe he has a question. Hi. Uh, Matt Dennis from the School of Education. Um, one of the things that occurs to me is what your sort of dream is of a lasting legacy legacy from the uh, from this project that's being proposed here in uh, Gary, Indiana. 
Um, that's a very good question, uh, because the legacy, that part needs always to be addressed. For example, for the outlying schools, like in Hammond, Münster, etc., the legacy will be that I'm teaching the, a skill that they can apply for other art projects. Now, the infrastructure that we are implementing of working with an entire district, which the school board uh, voted anonymously seven to nothing yes for, which is a great accomplishment, everybody is behind the project, is that we want to do first work with the Gary project and create the images that we want to create, but then the following year for the homecoming party in August, that the kids in the schools can maybe then build uh, floats for the homecoming party and use recycled materials for that, you know, based on whatever they would find. So there's just an ongoing an opportunity to, to show collaboration, because this is the main thing. It, it, Gary or any city cannot just do it by themselves. You know, New Orleans and the southeast region of Louisiana had the luck that a Hurricane Katrina destroyed it, right? And the world was paying attention. You know, but when I walk around Gary, it looks so much similar like what I've experienced down there. Unfortunately, not a hurricane has visited Gary, Indiana. You see what I'm saying? But if it had, it would get, it would have received the same national exposure for it. You know, and so, and I think that 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 a great community like Gary needs to have, you know, you know, have to have that. pointed out that I came from a, an upbringing that was also a little bit rough. Uh, I, can be, I have a knack for relating to kids without preaching at them, I think. Uh, and I'm just saying that in a way because um, what you asked me the question, what inspired me to do art, because I was misguided for the longest time, right? Because people, when I worked in Chicago, with the city of Chicago, you know, I wanted to become a like an attorney like Mayor Daly and Bill Daly, who were my bosses during uh, the World Cup soccer tournament in the 1996 Democratic National Convention. And I said, you know, I want to become, I don't want to be an artist, you know. They are all just, you know, lazy bunch of living in Brickell Park and, you know, never anything done. <laughs> Got no money and everything else. I be, you know. And so I was very misguided. And that is because I wasn't nurtured as a child. There, make no mistake about it. There's nothing more frustrating for a kid, knowing that they are meant for, for specialness or greatness or something inside of them, and there's nobody who is you know, getting it out of them. And so that is what happens when you don't pay attention to them, you see what I'm saying? And with the Gary Project, with all these kids, and I have taught kids that have had some really rough times, you know, brothers being killed in gang violence, personally being shot eight times, people emptying bullets, it's very therapeutic, and it just establishes communications, you know, and your ideas, brainstorming. Brainstorming without being stifled, right? And so, it is, now it's being, become more art with the mission, just as she correctly identified, and, uh, and this is just more like, now it's, now I'm, it's just more like, something has, has gotten hold of me, it's not just art anymore, this is really something where we can make a difference, you know? Um, when people come in the gallery, we don't tell them, no, you cannot take pictures, no, you cannot touch the art. It's Mardi Gras reads, right? They're meant to be touched. They're meant to be taking pictures of, you know? You know? So that's, so this is like, I had it all in me, you know, all this time. I was just, you know, misguided, you know? But now we're catching up. No, it's not because I'm pretty 